my soul just said yes, and my mind followed and said, yeah, great. There was no confusion. There was no cacophony. It just happened nice and smoothly. That's how I know that I'm listening to my intuition. Welcome to Satori Prime's Have It All podcast, where you get your fix of personal development without any of that fluff. A podcast dedicated to the unending quest of self-discovery and remembrance. You'll discover new breakthrough thinking and feeling technology that will cause shifts in all areas of your life, your finances, your body, relationships, and most importantly, your mind. You'll uncover your truest self and for probably the first time in your life, feel 100% worthy of having it all. It's time to stop talking and fantasizing about your dream life and start living it. So get ready to have your mind expanded in the best way possible. Now, fair warning, if you implement what you learn here, your life will never, ever be the same. So are you ready to have it all? Let's go. All right, my friends. So today I'm going to read you a more recent review. Came to us from Noelle Brianna, who headlined it, The Soul Seeps Out, Results That Resonate. I absolutely love it. So Noelle Brianna, if you're listening to this, please reach out to me, Elon at SatoriPrime.com, and I will send you a wonderful little gift. So she writes, as I listen to Guy and Elon, I can't help but hear their soul. Two men, brothers, who are surely helping a massive of people create results that resonate with their highest self. The shifts are internal, but they are visible. Cheers to a life where I truly have it all, including an amazing audio experience bringing me one step closer to becoming myself. Noel Brianna, thank you for the wonderful words. And if you would like to get your own very special gift, then head over to iTunes, leave us an honest rating. And when I read yours out loud, you can again, reach out to me at Elon at SatoriPrime.com and I will send you a great little gift. All right, let's get on with the show. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Personal development without the fluff coming your way. I mean, today is going to be a treat for me personally. So you guys just get to be a fly on the wall for this incredible, incredible conversation. I was gifted an introduction to this beautiful soul through a friend of mine. And we had a conversation. I was like, I I don't know if you'd be open. Would you be open to getting on a podcast? We had such a good time connecting and he has agreed. So first and foremost, Satyan Raja, welcome to the show. Thanks, brother. Really, really love being with you and jamming with you. Yeah, it was uh, it was one of those. We had this conversation last time, and I think both of us came off kind of like buzzing and vibrating. And I just said, okay, this is going to be a really, really cool podcast. So uh, before we we're go- birds of a feather, you just got more hair than I do, at least on the top of your head. So. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, Before we go into wherever we're going to go, I was like, Satyan, I don't know where this conversation is going to go. I just know it's going to go into cool, amazing places. But before we do that, I'd love for you to tell people a little bit about your background, what you've been up to, whatever you feel called to share. Certainly. So my current work right now is I coach CEOs of companies which are making a big impact in the world. And my Work is helping them stay aligned, dialed in, tuned in at their, not just peak performance, but helping them craft a life of peak existence. Mm. And I feel that living a life of our own personal peak existence fuels our intentions, our missions, our organizations much more powerfully than just going for peak performance, which we can perform better, but we might be burning out in other areas of our life. So for me, this paradigm of peak existence is what I love to support world impacting leaders do. So that's my current work. And I have an academy called Accelerated Evolution Academy, and that's where uh, my team trains helping professionals to really make transformational breakthroughs uh, with, with everyday people. So those, that's my current passion. My journey started off in martial arts when I was a youngster. I dove deep into this whole Shaolin Kung Fu tradition, And then I just became a human potential junkie, a fanatic. I spent my whole life, uh, 35 years, diving into that. And I don't have any particular loyalty to one system. 
my loyalty is to what works. And Bruce Lee has been a huge influence in that for me in his philosophy of absorb what's useful, discard what's outdated, no longer useful, and come up with new creations. So I could go on and on, but I've, I've been blessed to have a life of rich experiences and serving millions of people. And here we are today. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And you started this, you started originally with Warrior Sage, right? Well, actually, before, way before that, Warrior Sage started about 20 years ago. And I, my martial arts schools and my therapy centers started when I was 17. So that was when I was, yeah, quite a while back. So again, like, you know, for those of you guys who have followed us for any amount of time, you know that Guy and I also are junkies in the human potential space. And as soon as Satyan and I met, I was like, you're into this? Oh, you're into this? Oh, you're into this? And I think I had a really interesting conversation. So you're familiar with uh, Landmark Education. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yes, certainly. So I had a really interesting uh, meeting yesterday. A woman who was a Landmark Forum leader, who was one of the first forum leaders that I, I really kind of connected with. I was... Um, I was assisting and I was doing leader support. So I was actually leader support for her. Um, this woman, Sophie, who at some point was the third, third highest level, I guess, whatever form leader. And so she left the organization about five, six years ago and we had lunch yesterday. Oh yeah. And it was a one-on-one. -on -one. We were there for two hours. She just came back to New York city and what was so profoundly beautiful for me is when I first met this woman, I was at a certain stage in my life. In a certain stage, I'm not saying like life as life, I'm saying in my certain stage of personal development journey, quote unquote. And now, you know, 15, 16 years later, sitting across the table from this woman who at the time when I saw her was this like idolized version of a human being, the most, you know, to sit there and realize that we're on the same journey experiencing the same things, constantly seeking all of this human potential and unlocking and creating impact and all that stuff. And she said something really interesting, which I'd love for you to speak to as well. She said that the world of personal development of late is shifting in a big way. And the thing that kind of led the charge through the 70s, 80s, even 90s of this kind of like, positive thinking, mind game, all that stuff is basically coming to an end. And what's arising is this, what Ken Wilber, I said, would call like integral, more of an integrated yes. methodology of mind and heart and soul and energy and all of this stuff that wasn't really spoken about then. It's like all of those companies that are just working on the mind stuff are kind of falling off a little bit. And then this whole other experience is coming to light. And that was what she shared. I thought it was really interesting. And I'm curious because you've been at this for a very long time, what your take on it is. Totally. I concur. I mean, those paradigms of mastering the mind are valuable and they've been there and go, coming from a world of ignorance to a world of, okay, hey, this mind actually can direct and create our reality and support and augment our reality. So that's, that's, that's all news now to those in the know. Yeah. Okay, for those who are coming into it, it's still exciting, but we know this. It's in the, it's in the environment that we start dialing this up, everything else dials up, okay? I really feel this, the next level, aligned with your colleague who you just shared about, is the awakening of the heart, mm -hmm. the self-realization of the soul, who we are at a core intrinsic being. And I think the biggest transformation that's happening is going from a charismatic leader model to some lit up, turned on guru with great wisdom insights, which was great in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, because that type of power of charismatic energy and breakthrough and having a Werner, you know, hit someone in between the eyes and tear them apart and build them up and keep people locked into a room and pressure them, uh, break their spirit, break their old patterns through intense. I think that is going through a whole transformation. I feel it was necessary back then to help people the, the break from that a constricted reality. But now I feel it's masters at playing, playing with each other. Mm. So 
when we lead events, my teams, it's not this particular hierarchical energetic. We don't even speak about it. It's how we hold it inside. And I feel now it's that you're a master. I'm a master. Everyone listening is a master. And if we start assuming and holding that space that we are masters rubbing up, infusing each other, learning from each other, up-leveling each other, pointing out each other's blind spots, just really collectively raising each other up, this philosophy of masters at play is the new paradigm because that's actually what we are, divine beings at the source of it all. So why not start with that? And I think that's where we're heading and that's where uh, it has to go for there to be the next level of collective, grounded, earthy um, wisdom. There's, you know, as you're saying this, I'm thinking, okay, so like I've been at this for a while. I hear the word master, even inside of me, some parts are going, parts are going, yeah. Other parts are going, fuck no, like <laughs> you're a student, right? And, and I've been at this for a long time and I'm assuming listeners who are maybe coming into this world, they're going, I'm not a master at anything. Right. And so you're coming and, and saying this, which I, I, I love the concept of. For those people that are just in that world of darkness going like, I'm not a master at anything. My life is just a complete wreck. Like where, where would this land? How would you have that conversation? You gotta be a master at starting new then. <laughs> be a master of humility. Be a master student, a master person, a person who's mastering being coachable, yeah. a person who's mastering learning new ways. So the essence of what I'm getting across is the owning, the resting in our individual sovereignty and not, how can I say, projecting stardom, reducing the projecting as you shared, the stardom onto other great facilitators, great awakeners, great people who speak well, communicate well. And when we're seeing that happening and we're resonating, we're going, yeah, to continuously come back and go, yeah, and I have my own mastery and I'm joining and playing with this master in their power seat. If they were to come to you and you're, if I'm coming to you when you're on your game at your event, then I'm coming with an open book. I don't care what I know. Yeah. I want to hear what your brilliance is. I want to hear your shining. I want to receive the depth, the breath, and the, and your own unique savvy. Yeah. No one's got the savvy as you. You know, think and grow rich. There's a billion ways of expressing that. But the transmission of everyone's life experience is really the awakening force, I believe. Much more. So at the end of the day, what I have to say about this is contact is far more valuable than content. Hmm. And that's why for me, that's the new evolution. The contact between divine individuals rather than more content is the transformation and the new evolution. Do you feel in that respect to contact that based on different frequency and vibrations of where we are at any given moment in our lives, that we are creating that contact with people that are at and or around that vibrational frequency to us? Yes. And there'll be anomalies thrown at us all the time. There'll be people who are like, you're like, holy shit, they're not where I'm at. And there'll be people like, you'll start star dubbing them and you go, wow, this is way beyond me. Mm -hmm. And both of those are good reflections to take in to go, okay, I am in a state of transmission. We're transmitting anyways. My experience of this is we're in a mirror reality. You know, we shared about something the other day about a business contact and some business ideas. And lo and behold, you know, in a few days later, something synergistic, something synchronistic arises. So that we're transmitting is without a doubt. The quality of our transmission, the awareness of what we're transmitting is a timeless principle, a timeless practice, and I think even more so now uh, than ever before because of the bombardment of data content. We can go online. You don't need any great masters now to, to teach you content. Hmm. The greatest wisdoms on the planet are on my iPhone. I can download it right now. What's missing is the connection, 
the humanity, the passion, the love, the human to human, the humans with humans rubbing up against each other. And I think we're, we're coming back around to that tribal uplifting of our collective wisdom, but it's only going to happen. The internet and all these things that we're doing here support that, but it needs to support, I feel, the humans actually being at play with each other, like Burning Man or festivals or whatever, right? Yeah. It's so funny that if you think about social networks and Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and all these things are a function of human beings wanting to connect with other people. In essence, though, what it's done is it's made us more disconnected than ever, where we are now seeking, like you speak of, human touch. And I know for even as a, a coach, you know, we, we tend to work with a lot of people from all over the world, and as you do. And we started implementing more and more live physical events where we can actually connect with people one-on-one and look at each other in the eye and give each other hugs and have that physical touch. And it has made a profound difference. It's weird because you almost think like uh, you work with people for a few months, then you finally meet them. And like by the time I meet them, I know everything about them more than anyone else in their life probably does. And we give each other a hug for the first time. And it's just this like strange thing because I feel like I know that soul at such a high level. And yet it's the first time we're actually touching skin. It's a very strange experience. Well, you know, brother... You know, over the years, with all these technological breakthroughs, the fact that we're on Zoom right now and so forth, right? These are beautiful things and can augment real contact. Yes. So for me, I feel the subtle enemy behind, you know, us growing together is, and enemy is a strong word, but really it's the feeling of, um, why all these came things came into being Facebook and all is out of convenience. Yeah. And for me, mastery is the willingness to go into inconvenience. So when everyone is saying, Hey, make yourself available, make yourself more convenient to the others, make your timing of your events, make the timing of your product, your service, your help, make it even easier for everyone to get to. Even easier to consume, more convenient to consume, more convenient to purchase, more convenient to attend, right? I do the opposite. In in my work, it's freaking inconvenient every step of the way. And I make it inconvenient because how I grow is through the facing of the inconvenience. Oh, damn it. You're asking me to go the other end of the world. You're asking me to, you know, do this and this and this to be there. What that does is it either awakens the part of us that wants to meet that inconvenience with breakthrough energy. And no, even regardless, I'm going to do this. Mm. And when we do that, there's a power that grows just in that. One of my old mentors, Stuart Wilde. Do you, you ever heard of Stuart uh, Wilde? The infinite self. He... <laughs> he... <laughs> so, Stuart... I have goosebumps and I'll tell you why, because I got a hold of this book probably about two or three years ago <laughs> and it blew my mind. I actually listened to the audiobook, and it was him reading it, his wit, his energy, his, his passion, his insights immediately. Like I, I was listening to the book immediately. I go online. I'm like, where's your next event? Only to find out that he's already passed away. And I was just like, man. Of all, I got to see Wayne Dyer, who is my ultimate idol. And like Stuart Wilde was one of those people. I just regret that I didn't find him sooner that I could have. Seen. No, Wayne Dyer was a student of Stewie's. Ugh. So I was a student of Stewie's for about 30 years. He was wow. my like uh, close uncle, father figure. You know, when I think of him, you know, I, I get oh. really touched. Because he was the one that introduced me. He brought me through mystical experiences in the early days in my 20s. And and, um, he taught me about the, you know, his first thing with me was he's, um, I had reached out a while back. I had read something and he was in retirement, a mini retirement. And I left a message on the voicemail back then. Back, that's when you phone like this. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an answering machine. And then you leave a message 
back then, and, and they said he was on no longer giving seminars or anything, but you can leave a message um, with gratitude. So I left a message. Anyways, a few years, two years later, I get a call from an assistant saying, Stuart has chosen you amongst 12 people to come to England and Ireland. You've got to be here at this England, at this time of this place. And it was like absolutely inconvenient. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the team. I didn't have people to replace me in my martial arts school that I was running. And I went through hell, unbelievable things to get there with their urging on my wife. And he said, Satyan, it's the mastering of facing inconvenience, which is where you'll find the power of your self-discipline. So it's not, don't try to have a convenient life. Do the opposite. Find the inconvenience, master the ability to be open, spacious, and contactable and powerful in inconvenience. And then paradoxically, the inconveniences will fall away. Yeah. And so that's been my practice for 30 years. And I got to tell you, um, it, it, it's radically changed my life because now there's nothing inconvenient. And that's, I share that story with everyone because it literally that when, when you don't make yourself so convenient to be heard, listened, talked to, received, phone called, hey, you want to go out? No. Hey, you want to, hey, can I just spend two hours with you sharing my bullshit stories about this and this for the 12th time over and not change it all for you. Sure. I'll be happy to do that. I'll be happy to take your bullshit for the next two. Hours. No, no, sorry. As of today, sorry. As of today, son, daughter, I charge $5,000 for an hour. What? Yeah. It's, it's actually three times as much for my own children. <laughs> like, have fun. <laughs> Listen to your, bull your bullshit. You got to pay me more. <laughs> oh, good. So, I think there's something in that energetic of inconvenience that if we can learn to not be a slave of trying to get rid of it mm -hmm. or go around it, but face it, there's a lot of evolutionary life force in that. Hmm. I don't know if it was him in that book. I think it was where he talks about doing this exercise where you walk outside and 4 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning. It, it, but it was even more specific. It was like four Oh seven or something like that. And you just move stones from one. Oh, that was the different. Yeah, that's another inconvenience practice. Yeah. And, um, I remember reading that and going like, and, and he actually, what he does so brilliant, he can actually create the voice in your head very brilliantly so like he walks you through the exercise and then your mind's gonna do this and then you're gonna get there and your mind's gonna be like what the hell's the point of this and they're just gonna be yelling at you why are you doing this what's the point of this ah oh, so good man what a gift that i'll have to share with you some old pictures of stewie and i and some tales sometime okay oh that's amazing hello there i want to ask you a quick question yes you our dear listener have you felt this desire to work with Guy and I and our Satori Pride family? Have you kind of been on this outside looking in thinking, you know what, someday, one day, I'll be able to afford working with Guy and Elon? Well, listen closely because today is that day. See, Guy and I have recently launched our latest coaching platform called The Collective. And in it, we get to personally coach people just like you on every area of life that matters most to you. So if you are in fact ready to live a life of having it all, this is an amazing first step. Oh, and I didn't mention the best part. It's just $99 per month. That's right. Just $99 a month and you get to learn and grow with Guy and I personally on live trainings. Stay as long as you want. Leave whenever you want. Just $99 a month. So if you're ready to go on an incredible journey with Guy and I and your fellow Satorian family, simply go to satoriprime.com forward slash collective. Again, satoriprime.com forward slash collective and join us today. Enough of this one day, someday stuff. Today is your day. So I'm curious in the inconvenience factor. You mentioned a few things about, you know, making like phone calls and stuff like that and, and him with his events. What specifically is it that you do 
with that energy, I'm curious in your business, is it like in the CEO business? Is it in the... In my, in my business, right? So for example, with my CEOs, CEOs of impactful companies, which are successful companies, they don't have much time. They yeah. don't have time to bullshit. They don't got time to um, dilly daddy. I make it so they got to meet with me twice a week, once one-on-one and second time as a group, twice a week, right in the middle of a business day. Hmm. For how long? Well, the average are about, the one-on-ones are an hour and as a group, you know, we go about 90 minutes Mm -hmm. and then we meet three times, three, few times a year in inconvenient places outside of their norm, outside of their comfort zones. And I tell them nothing. They don't know what's on the agenda. They don't even know the timetable. Nothing. Show up at this time, this place. It's inconveniencing the part of the mind that needs to know to have things blueprinted because they need to, if they're running big, successful companies, a lot of this has to be blueprinted. Yeah. That power of jumping out of that, saying, hey, listen, no, I am going to do that. I'm going to inconvenience myself and put an hour aside for my own inner work. I'm going to put a 90 minutes aside per week for my collective work. And then I'm going to take time aside to truly retreat Hmm. and go into a temple environment, not knowing there's not one of them that has not become 10 X in a short period of time because of that dedication to the inconvenience, to entering the unknown, that power of, of willingness to do the things that other people are going to do. And it's not heroically inconvenient. That's extreme. I'm talking inconvenience from the norm. That's the power. And I believe if guys are in multi-million dollar levels of, 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 of responsibility can do it, we all can do it. Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely. I'm, I'm curious, the CEOs that you work with, so I think when, when someone hears the word CEO, the general understanding is these people are power hungry, money hungry, right? Like they just drive and the ego just tells them more money, more power, more money, more power, more money, more power. Someone to hire someone of your capabilities has to be thinking way beyond that. Or do they come to you and go, hey, Satyan, I, I really want to grow my business. And then you kind of take them through the whole loop. Or are they already at that level where they're thinking, you know what? There is more to life than just, I love that difference between peak performance and peak existence. And they're really looking for that holistic existence. So <clears throat> I'm very selective for a very particular pr- uh, reason. A part of that selection process is feeling the thirst for the individual to have total freedom. Mm. You really want freedom. Do you just want financial freedom? Because if you want just financial freedom, there's 10,001 coaches out there who yep. can support the finances going up. And some of them are damn good at it. And, and I recommend that. But for me, peak existence is having health and beauty and love and passion in my family life. Yeah. With my wife, my children, my family, my community. It also means for me having health and peace with my finances. Not just more earning, but peace with my earning. Peace with my savings. Peace with my spending. Peace with my investing. Professional side and personal. Peace is a whole new ancient and new value for these CEOs to bring into their personal and professional lives. Big time. So family, uh, finances, faith. Every empowered CEO knows nowadays that the power of their mind is where it's at, the power mm-hmm. of their intention. If they're not, they're in the dark ages, all right? Bottom line. If they're out of the dark ages, there's so much motivational material, so much management, mastery material on the planet. There's many who've done that route and have gotten to the height of the performance consciousness. And they know they can pull out a little bit more if they drink a little bit more particular type of coffee and they throw in some butter in it and they can do this. <laughs> they, can, they can tweak performance 1%, 10 
percent here and there and there and there and sleep in the bear, you know, in the chamber and in the oxygen. You can do all that stuff. But peak existence for me is when the soul Mm. and the mind are in unity. Amen. Not just the mind, not just the soul, as the spiritualists would say, that deny the power of the mind, not just the mind people who deny the power of the soul, but the soul and mind unity. I feel that awareness and growing and cultivation of the harmony and the flow between those wisdom centers within us allows us to navigate the Tao. We can feel when things, that direction, even when our mind goes, mm, that sounds interesting. We can, our prophets can go up this way. But if the soul, the intuit, mm, sometimes the soul says yes, and the mind goes, well, how do you, mm, mm, we need to do this. We need to listen to both. Yeah. And when both come into harmony, it's easy to come into harmony with the soul and mind when there's shitty stuff on the table. I don't like that person. Your mind says no. I don't like that restaurant. I don't like that service. The mind says no. The inside says no. Mm-hmm. But for them to come together around something good that's life forwarding is more, it's smaller occurrence. Big time. So the cultivation of the sensitivity of those wisdom centers and are they working together or not? To me, that navigates us further into chaos and craziness. Hmm. And then, as you said, the old CEOs, although the companies might do well on one level, the people are dying, they hate their work, the humanity is being crushed, their personal lives are suffering from poor relationships, poor health, no rest, no, no sense of calmness, always worked up, overwhelmed. No. That's, not, that's not living life. No, that's slavery. So it doesn't matter how much money you have, you're still a slave to yeah. the machine. So for me, peak existence is when we as leaders are emanating and living this life of equilibrium, that transmission goes through everything. Absolutely. And then that becomes the standard. Equilibrium becomes a standard, not growth. Growth for, To grow, an old mentor said to me, he says, grow from strength. Don't grow to become strong. Hmm. I love that. And these individuals are seeking this out this harmony or you know because a lot of people it, it, i don't know who told me it's like uh i don't remember who it was but they were talking about uh the chocolate covered carrot you know like you tell them what they think they need what they think they want and yeah, then i understand there, there's that old philosophy of uh, sell them what's shallow and deliver what's deep <laughs> yep. Right. Sell them with shallow. Deliver with the sell them the chocolate and give them the the healthy carrot. The right. Carrot, yeah. I gave up with that philosophy a few years ago. I think that's fucking stupid, and I think it doesn't honor the level and the and the consciousness of the people that where they're at and who I work with at that level for sure. Yeah. That's so. That's why I'm curious. Like, are these people actually seeking? Yes. This. Yes. They are. There is a growing number of underground business leaders who are closet spiritualists or consciousness people. They're closet consciousness people. And they don't come out with it because they think it's not acceptable. (laughs) But they've come to understand to grow large companies. They've come intrinsically to understand or through reading or studying or listening to lectures or self-help or going to management seminars that it's all mindset. Mindset, 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 from whatever angle that they're hearing it from. Sure. And those who have come to the peak of their mindset, utilization, it's them that thirst then for the soul level of understanding. So by grace, I I get to be sent the individuals by transmission, by affinity. I come across those who can see more than the profit, more than the external world, and they're intuiting a comprehensive freedom that they're wishing and they're yearning to live. I'll give an example. Like I've got one of my CEOs for was a head of a, you know, military industrial major behemoth. They started having inner awakenings and left that, that world. Hmm. And now they're, I trained them over a few years to be an executive coach. They're now seven figure plus executive coach to 
world changing. We're talking military industrial complex. We're talking um, Pentagon level influence, that type of influence, but they're bringing in these higher aspects of awakening. And guess what? We're having people in these levels awakening. They may not have the words for it, but there's an awakening going. And once the taste is there, then people want more yeah. because it's our true nature. Ultimately, we have to come into peak existence or we're going to self-destruct. Yeah. So, so good. Um, you said that, I don't know that you do this anymore, but last time you spoke, you said that you actually train coaches at the academy uh, through a process that, that you've kind of created and now you take CEOs on. I'd love for you to share about that because we, I know we have uh, listeners who are in this space. Sure. So everyone can check this out at Accelerated Evolution Academy. you got to put the academy, acceleratedevolutionacademy.com. And I have been studying with various you know, enlightened masters. There's two major masters that I consider like Nikola Tesla's of consciousness that I've been studying with for many, many years. And I've taken their wisdoms and synthesize them so that we can bring them to helping professionals. Hmm. So in our academy, I have a team of physicians, professors of psychology, psychotherapy, very brilliant uh, masters in their own right, who are now teaching this and are training physicians, uh, business coaches, life coaches, fitness co anyone who's helping other people. Hmm. What they do is they help people get, you know, there's so many techniques, EFT, NLP, tapping. I mean, there's one coming out every week if you go on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> and I, I value and I, and I honor them all. But coming from Bruce Lee's philosophy, I'm a very stringent on testing the effectiveness. Sure. And these methods are not belief-oriented. They're not energy transference, although I believe in all of that. They don't require any type of metaphysical acuity or understanding or understanding or belief in energy fields or any of that. They're exact guided protocols which take a limited state. Oh, I can't break through my million dollar mark. I can't break through making a hundred. I'm having shitty stuff going on with my children or my family or whatever. We've all heard that there's wisdom and there's a higher meaning behind any challenge. Now that sucks if someone tells you that when you're in the middle of it, right? Like, don't tell me that, right? Yeah. <laughs> in the middle help of it. Me, help me out. <laughs> so these, these are exact protocols which help people transform them and come to high states of inner realization and wisdom. So it's not just to relieve the symptoms, it's to help birth deep, profound self-awakening, self-actualization. So we call that accelerated evolution because it's the opposite of spiritual bypassing. It's like, what are you bypassing that we now need to get you to go into, but in an exact articulated way, which creates enlightenment, true, true embodied enlightenment. So that's been my passion for uh, the last eight years, our academy has been around training around the world. And now I'm happy to say uh, that we've got a stellar team that's bringing this now even wider to the world. Amazing. I love that. You, you said a word right now, spiritual bypass, which is something that, that we've been training here on for, for quite a while. And I actually, you know, when we started talking about the whole mindset, we, we grew up with landmark education, kind of that was like our entrance into this world. And it took me a long time to realize that while that mental game is really, really incredible, uh, it really allows you to spiritually bypass a lot of things. And just because you're able to handle aspects in the mind and reprogram them or shift your perspective to tap back into that empowerment state, which is wonderful. I'm not taking anything away from that. Yes. The fundamental flaw, just like everything has its, you know, strength and, and weakness, the fundamental flaw in it was that you're not handling or healing the true system aspect of it. So the true emotional scarring or ruptures or whatever we want to call it, you're not dealing with any of that. You're just allowing yourself to skip that emotional pain, skip that sensation in the body reword it, refigure it out, and then just keep moving forward, which by the way, I mean, even if people had that, they would be much happier in their lives. <laughs> and um, there is this whole other aspect to it. We were just on a coaching call right now and 
um, a woman who has done a lot of personal development work was stuck. And then she just went through this process with us and started to actually feel that little seven-year-old and had memories of what had happened and all this stuff. And it was the first time that she's actually connected the emotional trauma to what's been replaying over and over. It didn't matter what she does over and over in her life. So I'm curious the, the process that you take people through, right? Sure. There's pain involved for people like, you know, when I work with someone, I want to put them in a safe enough environment that they understand like as stuff goes in, stuff comes out. It's not always rainbows and like, oh, that feels so good. It, it, it hurts. Sure. I'm curious, like in that process for someone who, I don't know if they expect it, don't expect it. Like how are they able to go through that? So the philosophy of accelerated evolution is that any negative experience imprints on four levels of being mental images. Mm -hmm. So we see the bad thing happening over and over again, the accident, the hand slap, whatever it is, some type of mental image gets imprinted. So mental images is one of the four domains. The other area that the imprint happens is mental thoughts. Ah, oh, shit, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. Do I really deserve it? Am I worth all of those mental thoughts? Mm -hmm. Many systems work to rescript, recraft these particular type of you know languaging, mental images. NLP is yeah. excellent for that. NLP, I was going to say, yeah. okay, is very good for that type of modality of those. But we go deeper. We say that there's mental images, mental thoughts. There's emotions and the feelings that go on. And then there's the body sensations. So unless we're dealing with all four of these domains, we're only doing a partial healing, a partial transformation, which like you said, can be helpful and beneficial and can move people forward in life. But to have a thorough, complete dissolution or dissolving of some type of traumatic event, some type of limiting experience that put an imprint in someone that holds them back to this day, we need to enter in a very specific way all four dimensions, images, thoughts, emotions, and body sensations. So the somatic approaches are powerful and valuable, the body approaches, but they're not enough. Yep. The mental approaches are not enough. So in my search, I've been always looking for what can we do to address all these domains in a fast way, in a very deep way, because people, let's face it, successful, busy people, we don't have time to go to the therapist two, three times a week for a year, two years. We don't have time for that anymore. Or money or expense or energy or driving there, having this session. So pragmatically, I've always been on this search for what works, what works fast, what works deep to the core. And, you know, this is what we've put together. We've put together and we train people, you know, and actually what we do is we niche them. So anyone, um, I create specialists. So if it's a physician, I help them become a body, mind, spirit physician. Hmm. If they're a business expert, I help them become a body, mind, spirit, business expert. Nice. So, so what would have taken, so if it's a trauma therapist, literally, my friend, this sounds crazy and you can hold me to this. Most cases of trauma, we can resolve in less than 15 minutes. Wow. 15 minutes. And we've and all these trials and studies are being starting now. But it is in, it, to see it to go from an intensely charged traumatic experience to let's say ten out of ten in reactivity to zero out of ten in fifteen minutes permanently. We're not talking a temporary now and then comes back. That's that's where we're at today, and I'm very proud to say that we have an exemplary team that's now bringing this into all the worlds that need it, you know? So good. I want to switch topics just a little. Something that's been coming up a lot in, in our space of late is uh, conversations around intuition. Mm. I think it's becoming more and more in the forefront. I think as the feminine energy is just rising, people are men specifically, uh, I think it, it, it's naturally easier for women to tap into intuition than men just because of cultural programming. I'm curious for you as someone who supports this, and I'm sure, you know, like when we were talking about the harmony of these two, that obviously leads to deeper intuitive 
notions, thoughts, inspired actions, et cetera. I'd love to, any insights that you have about tapping into a more conscious field of intuition, maybe blockages of what you believe is stopping people from tapping into intuition, wherever you kind of want to. Absolutely. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not going in my mind. Yeah. I'm actually feeling the voice of my body being. Sometimes I can go to my mind, you'll see me, and I'll go up, and I'll be thinking, hmm, interesting. But what I do is I like to feel. For me, it's this area where I get messages. And for me, intuition comes in very simple two types of messages. Comfort that moves towards and comfort that contracts or discomfort that goes. So what I'm listening for is the comfort of my soul. That to me is intuition. So when we first met, my soul said, wow, what a wonderful man. What a, I'd love to, you know, and we had this wonderful jam. You yeah. invited me here. I didn't come to, from my mind. My mind could say, I got this, 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 this. My soul just said yes. And my mind followed and said, yeah, great. There had nothing ha- there was no confusion, there was no cacuffle, there was it just happened nice and smoothly. That's how I know that I'm listening to my intuition. So I'm gonna invite everyone to use another term to try out playing with your soul's comfort hmm. as another way of approaching the sensitivity and the cultivation of intuition. So pragmatically, practically, what to do. Next time you have a meal or something, here, you know, my beloved wife, she made a beautiful vegan potato salad instead of, yeah, delicious. She, put the, she put avocado and put it in front of me. And next time you have an opportunity to have a meal or you're at a restaurant, you say, what should I pick? Take a moment and don't pick with your mind. Take a moment and feel the comfort of your soul. Mm. And if something is comfortable, move towards that. Mm. Um, it, today, if there's some decisions that need to be made, start off with smaller decisions, yes. not big ones. Start off with one: should I go to the, should I go for a swim or should I go for a jog? It's not a big either or, as an example, right? Should I go grocery shopping now or should I wait till tomorrow? Listen, take a moment, breathe into the throat, heart, solar plexus, the belly. And feel for the comfort. And if there's more comfort, yes, move toward it. If there's no sign, do nothing. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. The mind will say, I need to get enough groceries for this and this. I, this people are coming at this. No, that's the mind. If it says, no, just be, take a hot bath. Okay, I'm going to take a hot bath. You don't even know what that hot bath might do for you. Yeah, That hot bath might make... Your friend call after you get out of the hot bath, say, I'm heading to the grocery store. I know some friends are coming over. You want me to pick something up? So these subtle miracles happen or seeming coincidences or yeah. coincidences as not only must we listen to the soul's comfort, it then the next step is being loyal to the soul's voice. So okay. good. Loyal to this because we're making decisions every day based on loyalties to something. Yep. So as I take my loyalty off convenience, my loyalty off not trying to make my wife upset and keep her, take my loyalty off my obligations to X, Y, and Z, and then I come back to the loyalty of my soul's comfort. Mm. That to me is the magic key to intuition. That and it grows and it informs and it nurtures the deeper you become loyal to it. Yeah, that's so good. I I, I would have described it almost exactly. I just I, I take people through this practice where they feel the yes in their system and feel the no in their system. And it's, I, I like the comf- the use of comfort more because for me, I have the same experience. For me, it's like a magnet pulling me towards something. It literally feels like coming out of my chest pulling towards something or it just 
it closes and pushes me back from that something. And to the point of loyalty, which I think is what Satyan explained is just so, so beautiful. This is a new paradigm to make life choices from. And for the majority of us, our mind has made every single decision you've ever made in your life. There have happened times where unconsciously something has pulled you in a certain direction and you experience magic and those stories generally come with, you won't believe what happened or this crazy thing, ta, ta, ta. The more you give into and surrender to and trust this new paradigm, this new feeling, the more it will communicate with you. It's, it's a atrophied muscle at best at this point for the majority of human beings. And so, yes, it's going to feel slightly strange and awkward to sit there and close your eyes like Satyan just described and pick your meal at dinner. The more you do this, I used to make myself wrong for feeling, I would feel that I want to take a nap in the middle of the day. And I would make myself wrong. I would not allow myself because I had certain beliefs that people that had X size business or certain success in their business don't take naps. Yeah. That means I'm lazy. That means I'm not trying. That means th 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 whatever it is. And I make all these things and I would, you know, take caffeine or whatever to stay awake. The more I started to tune into that feeling, when now my body says, hey, Elon, go take a nap, or hey, in the middle of the day, go sit in the corner and meditate for 30 minutes, or go take a walk, or go take your kids to the park. Whereas before, those things would have been like an absolute no. Here's the magic, and I know you're laughing because you know how this happens. Like, You'll go to the park with the kids. You'll spend two hours with these beautiful beings just in it, like present in it. That's the key. Present in it. Not like, oh God, I should be here. That took me a little while to understand also. Present. And then you come back into your day. And nine times out of 10, it's something like this. I will open my phone and I'll get an email from someone who either wants to be a client, purchased, introduction, opportunity, something always in the surrender and letting go and honoring what is there for me, what feels good in that moment to do without all that nonsense that the mind wants to jump in and tell you, you, know, you shouldn't do this and this is what we should be doing and da, da, da. And the more I trust and lean into that, life has just become so easy and effortless the perfect people are always there. The perfect amount of money is always there. The perfect opportunities are always, it just all lines up way bigger than I can ever imagine. And uh, I love those little examples because that's a great place to just start experimenting and playing with it. Thank you, brother. Yeah, so good. One more distinction I want to make on that. And that is there's creating from the mind. Mm -hmm. And then there's feeling of what wants to emerge. Mm -hmm. So when I'm with my team, there'll be times... So when we're doing a new venture, starting a new project, I'll sit down with them and I'll say, okay, just let's all close our eyes. Let's get in touch with our body sensation, our inner wisdom. And I'll say, regarding this, what do you feel wants to emerge? Not what do we want to create, not mm -hmm. what the plan is. The opposite, what wants to emerge? And then we all sit around and it's amazing mm -hmm. how much congruency is shared with a group that has closed they feel, yeah, that wants to emerge. They all say it in their own way. Whereas in the old days, I would say, hey, okay, we're ready. Here's our plan. We want to create this. How can we do this? How can we attain this goal? This and this. And so we were using solely the mind. And now we start with the soul, then use the mind. So we say, what wants to emerge? Ah. And that's not going to give any specifics. The soul doesn't give on Tuesday, six o'clock, you know, send your email. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, daily report. <laughs> so I'm using that. Our team is using that. The CEOs that I'm coaching are using this. What wants to emerge? Love that. And 
that's a feeling to attend. That also opens up and primes the atrophied intuition muscle. Mm. Satyan, I, I know you're going to have a hard time believing this, but an hour has... No. Yeah. That was yeah. like 15 minutes. Yeah, was like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, man. I could spend all day listening and having this conversation. It's just so... I've been doing this, what I consider to be a long time. You've been doing this for a much, much longer time. I just want to let you know that to come across human beings, souls, divine souls on this mission who, like when I'm around you, I have that same feeling that I had to, as you call them, Stewie. Like I, I feel like I'm in the presence of something bigger, that, that there's some wisdom and connection coming through you that is be, beyond this plane of ours. And it's just every time I'm around you and every time we've spoken, as we're speaking, you know, as you were sharing all this stuff, like I'm still learning to just speak and listen from here. And as we're having this interaction, I could just feel vibrations in my chest and you will say things and it will just impact me. And I could just feel it like reverberating through my entire body. And that's how I just know I'm in the presence of something, someone, something truly, truly wonderful. And so it just is truly for me, an absolute honor to, to share this uh, time and space with you. Uh, blessing, Yolanda and I. Very grateful for you and everyone listening and this beautiful circle that you've brought together and my love and my heart and my good energies with you and everyone. And I'm looking forward to a lifetime of wonderful friendship and brotherhood with you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so nice to meet people who are doing the kind of work and, and it just gives me, and I said this to you the first time, just that it's people like you that created paths, right? So the Wayne Dyers of the world, the Stuart Wilds of the world, like they carved out paths for people like you and I to walk down and, and continue this, I don't even know what it is, message, ideology, vision, idea, whatever it might be. And it's just so beautiful for me to look. It's actually a transmission of the 33 energies of humankind. <laughs> there you go. It's just so beautiful for me to see that manifest in reality and have, you know, sometimes you meet someone and it expands, even though I believe like we are living in the divine and limitless and the light, like the human mind has its parameters. Okay. This is what it can look like. And, da, da, da. and then I come across someone like you and I'm like, yeah, that's living at that level. And it just gives me access to something that, that I now get to like live into. And it's just, yeah, it's just, an honor. Absolutely beautiful. I, I look forward to seeing where this goes. So uh, if people want to reach you, find out more about the companies, uh, I know we mentioned some some uh, websites before, which we'll leave in the show notes, but please share any any those again. My personal work, as well as the Accelerated Evolution and other work is all on warriorsage.com. You Easy. can go there and find out everything I do. Beautiful. Satyan. Such an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us and sharing your absolute wisdom. Oh, my heart. Thank you. All right, everyone. We'll see you on the next podcast. Have an amazing day. I really hope you enjoyed that awesome conversation as much as I did. And as always, thank you for your continued loyal support and your listening. A couple of things. If you haven't already done so, make sure you go to Facebook right now and request to join our amazing private group. It's called Personal Development Without the Fluff. It's a quickly growing community with some amazing souls and amazing support. So if you've enjoyed this podcast, I can promise you, you will absolutely love that group. That's where we make all of our exclusive content available as well as trainings that are just for the group accessible to you and your fellow Satorians. So make sure you request access to that group immediately. Also, if you haven't done so already, we've put together an incredible app. 
You can go to satoriprime.com forward slash app and get immediate access right now to a 10 part mindset reboot training. It is an eye opening, mind expanding experience that you do not want to miss. Well, until we meet again, have an amazing day, my friend. I look forward to personally connecting with you and seeing how Satori Prime can.